touched Miss Ledford on the breast with the cold metal pliers. And if you listen to the tape, you'll hear those tire pliers being replaced in the toolbox a few seconds later. Oh, what, what did you touch her on the breast for with a pair of pliers? Hello there, bitch. Are you comfortable right now? I doubt it. Wrists and ankles chained, gagged, probably blindfolded. You are disoriented and scared too, I would imagine. Perfectly normal under the circumstances. For a little while, at least, you need to get your shit together and listen to the state. It is very relevant to your situation. I'm going to tell you in detail why you have been kidnapped, what's going to happen to you, how long you'll be here. I don't know the details of your capture because this tape is being created July 23rd, 1993 as a general advisory tape for future female captives. The information I'm going to give you is based on my experience dealing with captives over a period of several years. If, at a future date, there are any major changes in our procedures, the tape will be upgraded. Now, you are obviously here against your will totally helpless, don't know where you're at, don't know what's going to happen to you, you're very scared, or very pissed off, I'm sure that you've already tried to get your wrists and ankles loose, no you can't, now you're just waiting to see what's going to happen next, you probably think you're going to be raped, and you're fucking sure right about that, our primary interest is in what you've got between your legs. You'll be raped, thoroughly and repeatedly, in every hole you've got. Because, basically, you've been snatched and brought here for us to train and use as a sex slave. Sound kind of far out? Uh, I suppose it is to the uninitiated, but we do it all the time. It's going to take a lot of adjustment on your part, and you're not going to like it a fucking bit. But I don't give a big rat's ass about that. It's not like you're going to have any choice about the matter. You've been taken by force, and you're going to be kept and used by force. What all this amounts to is that you're going to be kept naked and chained up like an animal, to be used and abused any time we want to, any way that we want to. You might as well start getting used to it, because you're going to be kept here and used until such time as we get tired of fucking around with you. And we will, eventually, in a month or two, maybe three, it's no big deal. My lady friend and I have been keeping sex slaves for years. We both have kinky hang-ups involving rape, dungeon games, etc. We've found that it is extremely convenient to keep one or two female captives available constantly to uh, satisfy our particular needs. We are very selective when we snatch a girl to use for these purposes. It goes without saying that you have a fine body, and you're probably young, maybe very young, because, for our purposes, we prefer to snatch girls in the early to mid-teens, sexually developed, but still small-bodied, scared shitless, easy to handle, and easy to train, and they usually have tight little pussies and assholes. They make perfect slaves. Any time that we go on a hunting trip, if we can find a little teenager, we usually start hitting the gay bars, look for a well-built, big-titted lesbian. I thoroughly enjoy raping and screwing around with lesbians, and there's not as much danger of them carrying a sexually transmitted disease. And I don't like using condoms. Also, even though they're a little older, unless they've been playing with dildos a lot, they still have tight holes between their legs like the younger girls. If we can't find a lesbian that we want, we snatch anything that is young, clean, and well-built. We very seldom come back empty-handed, because there's plenty of bitches out there to choose from. And with a little practice in deception, most of them is very easy to get with a little risk. At this point, it makes little difference what category you fall into. You're here, and we're going to make the most of it. You're going to be kept in a hidden slave room. It is relatively soundproof, escape-proof, 
and it is completely stocked with devices and equipment to satisfy our sexual fetishes and deviations. There may or may not be another girl in the room. Occasionally, for variety, we like to keep two slaves at the same time. In either case, as the new girl, you'll definitely be getting the most attention for a while. Now, as I said earlier, you're going to be kept like an animal. I guess I've been doing this too long. I've been raping bitches ever since I was old enough to jerk off and tie the little girl's hands behind their back. As far as I'm concerned, you're a pretty piece of meat to be used and exploited. I don't give a flying fuck about your mind or how you feel about this situation. You may be married, have a kid or two, boyfriend, girlfriend, a job, car payment. Fuck it. I don't give a rat's ass about any of that. I don't want to hear about it. It's something you're going to have to deal with after you're turned loose. I make it a point never to lack a slave, and I fucking sure don't have any respect for you. Here, your status is no more than that of one of the dogs or of one of the animals out in the barn. Your only value to us is the fact that you have an attractive, usable body. And, like the rest of our animals, you will be fed and watered, kept in good physical condition, kept reasonably clean and allowed to use the toilet when necessary. In return, you're going to be used hard, especially during your first few days while you're new and fresh. You're going to be kept and chained in a variety of different positions, usually with your legs and knees forced wide apart. Your pussy and asshole is going to get a real workout, especially your asshole because I'm into animal sex. Also, both of those holes are going to be subjected to a lot of use with some rather large dildos, among other things. And it goes without saying, there's going to be a lot of oral sex. On numerous occasions, you're going to be forced to suck cock and eat pussy until your jaws ache and your tongue is sore. You may not like it, but you're fucking sure going to do it. And that's the easy part. Our fetishes and hang-ups include stringent bondage, dungeon games, a little sadism, nothing serious but uncomfortable and sometimes painful. Just a few little hang-ups that we like to use when we're getting off on a bitch. <laughs> if you're a young teeny bopper and ignorant about fetishes and deviations, you're about to get an enlightening crash course in sex. Who knows? You may like some of it. It happens, occasionally, if we want to take the time and trouble. Even under these conditions, most bitches can be brought to orgasm. Now, I've already told you that you're going to be here a month or two, or maybe three, if you keep us turned on. If it's up to my lady, we'd keep you indefinitely. She says it's just as much fun and less risky. But, personally, I like variety. A fresh pussy, now and then, to play with. We take four or five different girls each year, depending on our urges and sometimes accidental encounters. Basically, I guess we're like predators. We're always looking. Occasionally, some sweet little thing will be broke down on the side of the road, walking, bicycling, jogging. Any time an opportunity like that presents itself, it's not too risky, we'll grab her. Even if we've already got a captive in the playroom. Variety is definitely the spice of life. Now, I'm sure that you're a great little piece of ass, and you're going to be a lot of fun to play with, but I will get tired of you eventually. If I killed every bitch that we kidnapped, there'd be bodies strung all over the country. And besides, I don't like killing a girl unless it is absolutely necessary. So, I've devised a safe, alternate method of disposal. I had plenty of bitches to practice on over the years, so I've pretty well got it down pat. And I enjoy doing it. I get off on mind games. After we get completely through with you, you're going to be drugged up real heavy with a combination of sodium pentothal and phenobarbital. They are both hypnotic drugs that will make you extremely susceptible to hypnosis, auto-hypnosis, and hypnotic suggestion. 
You're going to be kept drugged a couple days while I play with your mind. By the time I get through brainwashing you, you're not going to remember a fucking thing about this little adventure. You won't remember this place, us, or what has happened to you. There won't be any DNA evidence because you'll be bathed and both holes between your legs will be thoroughly flushed out. You'll be dressed, sedated, and turned loose on some country road, bruised, <laughs> sore all over, but nothing that won't heal up in a week or two. The thought of being brainwashed may not be appealing to you, but we've been doing it a long time, and it works. And it's the lesser of two evils. I'm sure that you would prefer that in lieu of being strangled or having your throat cut. Okay, undoubtedly, somebody's going to be looking for you. There may or may not be a missing persons report. But nobody's going to be looking for you here. They don't have any idea where you're at. You don't even know where you're at. We're always very careful about that. There are not going to be any knights in shining armor coming to rescue you. You are strictly on your own, and under the circumstances, I bet that is a scary thought. If there is another girl in the room, she won't be able to help you either, because she's going to be in the same position you're in. As for escaping, I'm sure they'll try to figure out a way. That's human nature, but it's not hardly even worth talking about here. It would not be prudent on our part to have you running around in the woods screaming rape. It would be an embarrassment, to say the least. Consequently, you are going to be kept in an environment that is even more secure than a prison cell. If it has not already been done, very shortly, a steel collar is going to be padlocked around your neck. It has a long, heavy ch Any time that you are left unattended in the room, your wrists will be chained and there are electronic sensors to uh, let us know if you move around too much. And if that's not enough, there is a closed circuit TV system with a surveillance camera. It's wired to the main TV in the living room so we can check you once in a while or just sit and watch you for the fun of it. Electronics is a wonderful thing. Expensive. But hell, everything in that room is expensive and damn well worth it. If everybody knew how much fun it was to keep a sex slave, half the women would be chained up in somebody's basement. Anyway, we've had a lot of practice at this, and uh, we're not real concerned about you escaping. You're fucking sure not gonna go anywhere. Now, if you're not already naked, you soon will be. Your clothing will be bagged up and saved until such time as we decide to turn you loose. As far as being naked goes, you might as well get used to it. For what you are going to be used for, clothing would just be in the way. Besides, I like watching a naked woman's body. All of it. Whether it be in a room or on the TV set. As I've already said, you'll be fed and watered on a regular basis. Not as much of either as you're used to, I'm sure. But enough to keep you healthy. You'll only be fed once a day like the rest of the animals, and during the first few days, until you adjust to it and your stomach shrinks up, you're going to feel a little weak, and you'll be hungry all the time. It won't take long, three or four days, and during the first few days, until you adjust to the environment, I prefer to keep you in a weakened condition anyway. Now, you already know that you've been kidnapped and brought here for us to train and use as a sex slave. I realize that being abducted, being forced into sexual slavery is a hard pill to swallow. Some girls really have a lot of trouble with it. I'm sure that you will, to a certain extent. But face it, you can't get away. You can't say no. You're going to be naked all the time. You won't be able to struggle or resist. You're going to have to lay there and take it, good or bad, no matter what is being done to you. Scary thought? Yes, but there are no options. Nothing that you can say or do will change the fact it's going to happen. Many girls beg and plead. 
Almost all of them cry a lot, especially during the first three or four days. And some of them scream and threaten. But I have a poster on the wall in the playroom that says it all. If they're worth taking, they're worth keeping. And I'm going to tell you, just so you know, since you are being kept here against your will, we will never trust anything you say, do, or promise. You are a potential threat to us, and you will always be treated as such. On numerous occasions, bitches have told me that they'd do anything I wanted them to do if I'd just take the chains off. I've been offered ransom money, and I've even had girls tell me they liked it. But I like to use the chains. Money's not that important, and masochists are rare as hell. <laughs> I wonder what your scam is going to be. Not anything I haven't heard before, I bet, if you get a chance to talk at all. Well, let's change the subject a little bit. You already know that, for the most part, you're going to be kept in the playroom. But, once in a while, we like to take a captive into the bedroom. In chains, of course. Also, we have a couple of real close friends we party with once in a while. They know about our hang-ups and don't have any problem with fucking a slave. You may be required to service them occasionally. But that's an easy one. For the most part, just fucking and sucking. They don't get into the heavier stuff. However, when we have a party, sometimes I like to put on a little show that you won't like at all. You'll be taken into the living room and put on the floor on your hands and knees, naked. Your wrists, ankles, knees, and hips will be strapped to a metal frame to hold your body in that position. The frame is designed for doggy fucking, your ass up in the air, sex organs exposed, your tits hanging down on each side of a metal support bar, knees spread about 12 inches, positioned similar to that of a bitch dog in heat, right in the middle of the floor so we can sit on the couch and in chairs and watch. I'm going to rub canine breeder's musk on your back, the back of your neck, and on your sex organs. Now I have three dogs. All of them's male, because I don't need any fucking pups. One of them is a very large German Shepherd that is always horny, and he loves it when I bring him in the house to fuck him up. After I let him in the house, he'll sniff around you a little bit, and within a minute, he'll be mounting you. There's about a 50-50 chance which hole he'll get his penis into, but it doesn't seem to bother him whether it's the pussy or the asshole. His penis is pretty thin. It goes in easy, but it's about 10 inches long, and when he gets completely excited, it gets a hell of a knot right in the middle of it. Now, I've had slaves tell me that it feels like they got a baseball inside of him. It doesn't take long. He's going to hump you real fast for about three or four minutes while he's doing it. He'll wrap his front legs around your chest to hold himself in position. And in the process, he'll probably scratch your tits up a little bit with his claws. After he gets through, he usually turns around and tries to pull out. Oh, he'll jerk a little, not much, mostly just steady pressure, and I've timed it. The knot will usually shrink up enough to come out of your pussy in about three minutes. If he's in your asshole, about five minutes. I don't use the dog all that often, but I don't deprive him of pussy either. There's no doubt that he's going to be on you a few times while you're here, because I like watching it. And any time it's just you, me, and the dog, it will always be in your butt. The dog knot on his penis is big and extremely uncomfortable when he's uh, pushing it back and forth way up in her anus. I really enjoy watching a girl wiggle, jerk, and squirm around while he's doing it. Consequently, I give him a little uh, assistance in getting it in the right hole. Now, if you think all of this stuff is sick and depraved, you haven't seen anything yet. This is a different world. Among our small circle of friends, little things like rape, kidnapping, doggy fucking, stuff like that are everyday occurrences. 
matter of course. Here, anything can happen, and often does. We like living in the mountains because it's quiet, secluded, private, and everybody minds their own business. The only close house belongs to our friends, and they don't hear or see anything. Okay, let's talk about uh, your training, the rules, and punishment. Here, you are a slave, and discipline is extremely strict. You're going to be given a set of rules, things you can and cannot do, and you will learn to comply, because each time you violate a rule, you will be punished. As soon as each rule is told to you, it will become law as far as you're concerned. And you know what's going to happen every time you fuck up. We'll use a couple of methods of punishment. A whip is an excellent training aid. So is an electroshock machine. Anytime you get out of line, one or both will be used on your body. And I assure you, it will not be pleasant. There's not many rules. They're very easy to remember. But you're going to make a few mistakes. Every slave does. I don't like repeat offenders. It gets me very upset. During the first few hours, the first time you violate a certain rule, teaching process. The second time you violate the same rule, you'll be lightly punished. And the third time you violate it, it's going to be full punishment. After the first day, we won't cut you any slack at all. We will expect total obedience. Now let's start this off right. You are a slave. You don't realize it yet, but you will, eventually. I'm your master, and the lady is your mistress. You will be totally docile. You will be very quiet, and you'll speak only when spoken to. Never initiate conversation. Keep your mouth shut. Any time that you are spoken to, you will be required to respond, and it will be with proper speech. Remember that we are in the dungeon game, and as long as you are here, it's the only game in town. Any time that you are asked a question, where a yes or no answer is required, you will respond by saying, yes master, no mistress, no master, etc. You will show proper respect. Having to use the word master or mistress may sound funny, petty, or vain to you, but that's all right. If you choose not to do it, you can laugh while you're being whipped or when your body is convulsing under the electroshock machine. You will respond to commands without protest or resistance. Do exactly what you're told, nothing else. Remember that here you are a slave and failure to respond to a command will definitely get you in trouble. If I decide to rape you in your pussy or in your asshole, don't resist or struggle. When I tell you to spread your legs or to pull them back, you say yes master and obey the command, because to do anything less will get you beaten. If I tell you I want to be sucked off, you say yes master and open your mouth. I love oral sex if it's done right. You're going to be taught exactly the way I like it. How to use your lips and tongue. We'll be practicing a lot, and each time when I get ready to come, I'm going to push my penis down your throat and keep it there until I get through squirting. I'm not going to choke you, but you need to learn to hold your breath and to swallow every bit of the sperm. If I see one drop leaking out of your mouth, I'm going to punish you. Basically, it's going to be the same with your mistress. If she demands oral sex, you say, yes, mistress, and respond. She also will teach you exactly the way she likes it, and you will keep using your tongue on her pussy until she gets off. Now, I can't foresee what kind of bitch you're going to be, how you feel about oral sex, or any of that shit, but I am going to tell you this. If during oral sex or any other time you should bite one of us I'm going to cut on you a little bit I'll cut your nipple off for a starter and if it's a bad bite I'll cut your tit off too that may sound harsh 
but your teeth are serious weapons and we're not going to tolerate any shit from you. I have been bitten and that have cut off nipples, so don't fuck around. That's enough said about that. Remember the commands, yes, master, no, mistress. If your mistress should come into the room and tells you to get down on the floor or lay down on the floor, you say, yes, mistress, and then lay down on the floor exactly the way she told you to do. If she tells you to pull your knees up, you say, yes, mistress, and pull your knees up. If she tells you to spread your knees, you say, yes, mistress, and spread them wide apart and hold them there so she can play with your pussy, use dildos or whatever. A slave must always obey every command and offer no resistance. Remember that. Never say no unless it's justified like in response to a question. If either one or both of us decide to put you in a different bondage position, the chains will be taken off the various parts of your body, wrists and ankles, never off your neck. Don't kick, struggle, or resist in any way. If you do, you're going to be in a world of hurt. If you're told to hold your leg out so a chain can be attached to your ankle, you say yes master or yes mistress and hold your leg out. For repeated rule violations, the punishments are eventually going to become harsh and even brutal and you won't have anyone to blame but yourself. Now, I should also tell you that there's going to be times when the whip and electroshock is used not for punishment but for our pleasure. The difference will be that when it's done for pleasure, the whip strokes will be much lighter. They'll sting like hell, but they won't have that burning sensation and leave welts that hurt for hours. As for the electroshock machine, the voltage will be turned down. It won't be that harsh electricity that uh, makes your body convulse and jerk all over the table. You haven't experienced any of that yet, but I'm sure that you will. To avoid these punishments, you're going to have to be very quiet, very docile, and very obedient. And I imagine that's going to be very hard for you to do. You'll probably try us a few times to see if this is real. <laughs> Most captives do. If you want to, be my guest, because it's all part of the game. Now let's discuss talking. You cannot talk. You cannot speak unless you've been given permission. I believe that rule gets more bitches in trouble than anything else, because they can't keep the damn mouth shut. They always want to whine, beg, plead, try to talk me into turning them loose. I used to listen to it. I don't anymore. I enjoy blessed silence. Around here, your mouth is for sucking, not talking. Around here, the only time I ever want to hear you initiate speech is if you have to use the restroom, and you will learn to do it properly. Master, may I please use the restroom, or mistress, may I please use the restroom. In response, we will ask you what you need to do. If you have to pee, you say, pee, master, or pee, mistress. If you have to crap, you say, crap, master, or crap mistress. It will be done that way because, quite often, you will be in heavy restraints, a lot of straps on your body, chains on your wrists and ankles, a bunch of stuff that's time-consuming and hard to get loose. If you have to pee, we'll use a bedpan. If you have to shit, you may have to hold it a while. Whatever the case, we need to know. And you definitely need to tell us. Because if you make a mess, you're going to be punished, and you have to clean it up. Now, I've covered the basics pretty thoroughly. You know to keep your mouth shut, and not try to talk. You know the proper way to say master or mistress, and you know how you're expected to act and respond to commands. If you can learn to do all that, there will not be a great deal of punishment. You'll get along pretty good. There's going to be a lot of other things done to your body besides just fucking and sucking. But for that, for the most part, you'll either be in stringent bondage or strapped down on a gynecology table. 
you won't be able to struggle or resist anyway. No. You're going to be required to learn fast. Training is not one of my favorite things to do, and I prefer fucking around with a slave that's already trained. I've already given you the basics, so there is not that much to learn. But until you accept the fact that you are a slave, you're going to have problems with it. Remember that each time you fuck up, you are going to be punished. And after it's happened a few times, you're really going to dread it. Some girls tend to be a little rebellious. I sure as hell wouldn't advise that, because it will get you in serious trouble. Here, you definitely need to be docile. You're not in any position to be otherwise. We've done this so many times that we know exactly what we like to do with a slave. We don't go out of our way to brutalize a girl. If you don't give us any trouble, we won't do any more to your body than is necessary to satisfy our sexual needs. Initially, when we've got a new girl in the playroom, we're kind of like a kid with a new toy. You are fresh and exciting, and we're going to spend a lot of time playing with you. Later, after the newness wears off, things will settle into something of a routine. We'll only be spending three or four hours each day in the playroom, you're going to have a lot of free time to rest, sleep, watch TV, or whatever. If you're acting halfway decent, you'll be left in a reasonably comfortable position so you can relax. As far as sex goes, your mistress is going to want her pussy eaten a couple of times a day. For my part, I like getting off in a slave twice and sometimes three times each day, usually in her mouth or in her asshole. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to be sticking my dick in your cunt once in a while, too. But for the most part, when I use that hole, it's going to be with uh, large dildos. We're going to be in and out of the room several times each day, but you will have a lot of free time. Now, i got to tell you that there's another side to the coin. Once in a while, we get a bitch that is resentful, rebellious, won't mind, uncooperative, that doesn't work here. I'm sure that you realize you're on thin ice. As long as you have chains on your body, don't try either one of us. It is an extremely dangerous thing to do because, if necessary, I'm capable of doing things to your body and torturing you in ways you can't even imagine. The playroom is equipped with a full set of surgical instruments, which I have had occasion to use and will, again, as necessary. I've already told you what will happen to you if you bite. To be completely safe here, you have to be docile. If you should accidentally, or otherwise, hurt, scratch, or kick either one of us, you could be in very serious trouble. I'm sure that you want to survive this experience, and I want you to also. But you are expendable and it's no big deal to go out and snatch a replacement. It may sound harsh and cold, but if you give us too much trouble, or if you pose any kind of threat to us, I won't have any qualms at all about slicing your throat. Like I said before, I don't like killing the girls that we bring here, but occasionally things happen. What can I say? I would really hate to have to dump that pretty little body off in a canyon somewhere to rot. I'm not trying to scare you. That's just the way it is. Be nice. Keep your mouth shut. Learn the rules and survive. We're into S&M, and you're going to be hurt a little. But everything we do to a girl is designed to cause pain, not injury. There is a big difference. No matter how painful it is, nothing that we plan to do to your body will cause any serious or permanent damage. I'm not lying to you or trying to make it sound easier because that would be pointless. I'm just telling it like it is. That's the way we do things and that's the way it's going to be unless we have problems with you. I've already told you that you're going to be whipped lightly for our pleasure. The electroshock will be used lightly for pleasure. 
most of the other nasty little things that we're going to do, for the most part, will be done on your breasts, nipples, and between your legs. The lady is fortunate. She can get off any time. She just likes to be a little sadistic with a slave every once in a while. In my case, I cannot get off with a girl unless I hurt her first. That's basically the reason I'm into rape and slavery and the reason that you're going to be subjected to a certain amount of pain. Mostly what we do to a captive is stick needles in her breasts and through her nipples, through her cunt lips, through her clit, and I'm into stretching certain things. Clamps with long nylon cords on each one will occasionally be put on your cunt lips so your pussy can be kept pulled open. And they're also going to be attached to your nipples. The nylon cords will be put through ceiling rings or rings on each side of the table and pulled very tight to stretch your tits. Occasionally, your clit will also be clamped and stretched and we're going to be using dildos. The dildos are going to be used a lot, more than anything else, and consequently what you're going to have the most trouble with. Many of them are very long, very large in diameter and very painful when they're being forced in. Your mistress will use them in your pussy, and I like to use them in both holes. Actually, that pretty well covers it. There's going to be a few other little things that we do, nothing of greater consequence, not often, just variety. As far as needles go, they'll always be sterilized. The clamps are going to hurt like a motherfucker, but they won't cause any permanent injury. They won't even break the skin. As far as the dildos go, both of those holes between your legs will stretch a hell of a lot. It'll hurt, but they'll stretch. Your pussy is designed for a baby to come out of, and we won't be using anything bigger than that. The really large ones will not be used in your butt. I don't want to stretch that hole so big that it's not usable for fucking. Anyway, that pretty well covers that part of it. Let's see, what have I missed? Let's talk about screaming. Every once in a while we get a scream. Some bitch that just wants to scream all the time. And it definitely gets him in trouble because it gets on my nerves. Very shortly that gag is going to be removed. We live in an isolated area, so screaming is not usually a problem. In the playroom it's not much of a problem at all because of the soundproofing. But it irritates the fuck out of me. There is a time and a place. Occasionally I like to hear a bitch scream, but usually not. The only thing that screaming is going to get you around here is a lot of punishment. And if you do it habitually, I will just keep a ball gag in your mouth all the time. It will only be taken out for you to eat and suck. I've already told you about talking. Don't try to initiate a conversation. Don't say anything. You will be punished. If you're a smoker, now's a good time to quit. I'm not going to buy your cigarettes, and if you ask for one, the only thing you're going to get is a few whip marks. Remember, when you're asked a question, you say, yes, master, or no, master. If you have to go to the restroom, it is master or mistress. May I please go to the restroom? Any time that you are given a command, always acknowledge the order verbally, yes, master, and then obey the order. It's not too difficult right little thing like you should be able to learn it real fast. There are going to be times when you are under a stress, a certain amount of stress, and you may forget. That's no excuse. Each time you fuck up, you are going to be punished. After you're here a few days, it will eventually become automatic and there will no longer be a problem. I realize that after a while, when I take that gag off, you are really going to want to try to talk to me talk me into turning you loose and such, it's because with your wrists and ankles chained, your mouth is the only defense you have. But don't do it. It won't work, and all it will bring is punishment. Your first day here is not going to be too difficult. There won't be any serious dungeon games. Your training has already been initiated, so you'll have to be very careful what you say and how you act. But for the most part, is going to be a little exploring. We will become very familiar with your body and do a little fucking and sucking. We may tease you a little bit with some of our more humane toys, but 
nothing serious. It's going to be kind of an adjustment period. Don't say anything. Don't struggle or resist, no matter what we do, because we are going to start enforcing the rules immediately. Now later, I'm going to be asking you a bunch of questions. Since I'm going to be caring for your body for the next month or two or three, there are certain things that I need to know. I've prepared a questionnaire that I fill out with each new captive. Some of the questions are going to be embarrassing, but you should answer them truthfully and completely. You damn well better. I don't want to catch you in a lie. The questions will be in reference to your physical condition, any medical conditions that I'd need to know about, medications, sex habits, sexual preferences, any childbirth you might have had, period dates, and so forth. Now your training has already started. Each time I ask you one of those questions on the questionnaire, there's going to be a proper way to answer it, which I'll tell you about in a few minutes. While we go through the questionnaire, you're going to be strapped down on the gynecology table. Your feet will be in the stirrups and your knees will be pulled wide apart with everything exposed. I like to keep a girl that way while she's answering the questions so I can examine and verify uh, any things she might tell me which would affect her use as a sex slave. If you do have any kind of medical conditions, by all means, let me know. We'll discuss it, and we may make adjustments. We won't turn you loose, but we may make adjustments. We're probably going to be starting on this questionnaire pretty soon. You will be naked, and as I said, you'll be strapped down on a gynecology table so you can't wiggle or squirm around. You will be talking quite a bit, answering the questions, so I'm sure that we'll start your speech training at the same time. Consequently, before we start on the questionnaire, two small electrical clamps will be put on your nipples. Each time a question is asked, you will respond properly. For instance, if I ask you how old you are, you will respond by saying, Master, I'm 19 years old. Answer the question completely and say nothing else. If the question requires a yes or no answer, say, Yes, Master or no master. If I ask you your period dates, you say master, my period is so and so. If I ask you about childbirth, you say no master, or master, I had a baby a year ago, or whatever. Always start each sentence by saying master, and take your time. We're not going to be in any hurry. Think about what you're going to say before you say it, because each time you fuck up, I'm going to press a little button and send a few thousand volts of electricity through your nipples right down into your tits. You are in training, so it will just be a quick blast. I'm not going to hold it down and torture you, but each time you screw up, it's going to be a little bit worse. So take your time, answer the questions properly, I'm not going to push you. We're not going to be in any hurry. Think about each thing you're going to say and be damn sure and start your sentence with master. If you get through that okay, get your speech down pat, keep your mouth shut, and don't give us any trouble, then the first day is going to be real pleasant for everybody. I'm going to put some dildos in those holes between your legs, but they will not be big ones. Basically, I just want to become very familiar with your sex organs and the size of your holes. All girls are different. During the course of the day, you're going to be raped several times, but that's no big deal. The second day, after you get totally familiar with the rules and procedures, we're going to get down to the nitty gritty. A lot of it will not be very pleasant for you. But you might as well get used to it, because it's going to be like that for a while. Eventually, things will settle down a little. Then, just take it day by day. Well, I believe I've told you about everything that I can. I cannot predict the future. I can't predict changes of procedure. But if this tape is being played for you, I have to assume that it is still reasonably accurate. And I can only give you advice. Be smart and be a survivor. Don't ever scream. Don't talk without permission. 
be very quiet, be docile and obedient, and by all means, show proper respect. Have a nice day. Roy Norris was found guilty of four counts of first-degree murder and one count of second-degree murder, and he was sentenced to 45 years to life in prison or death. This year, at age 72, he died in prison. He was eligible for parole in 2010, but he died on February 24, this year. Norris later said he was sorry for what he did, but Lawrence Bittico was completely unrepentant. When the tape of Lynette's torture was shown to the jury, he even smiled. For killing five people, he was sentenced to death. However, he died in prison in December 2019 at the age of 79 after he tried to get a different sentence. Andrea Hall, 18, Lucinda Schaefer, 16, Jackie Gilliam, 15, and Jacqueline Leah Lamp, 13, were all teenage girls who were killed in the same way that Lynette was killed. In 1987, Paul Bynum, the detective who had been in charge of the Bittaker Norris case, killed himself at the age of 39. The murders haunted him in his suicide note, he said. A tape of Lynette Ledford's torture is in the hands of the FBI, and it's used to make new FBI agents less afraid of torture and murder.